week on Top Billing. The chart-busting Lockenville twins celebrate their 26th birthday with family and friends. Elle magazine go all out for their 20th birthday festivities. Mother to baby Cairo DJ Zinke gets her dynamite figure back and puts more women DJs on the beat. Sunshine Circuit Pro Jake Redman weds radio's Daisy Fencham in a dress worn by her mother and grandmother before her. Super Brain and Mr. SA 2012, Andrew Govender, stars in the new film Free State. Entrepreneur Jessica Bonin gives Big Brand Coffee a run for its money. And your presenter this evening, Roxy Berger, brings you our lineup from this tropical modern hideaway up the Dolphin Coast. Good evening and a balmy North Coast welcome to Top Billing. You've seen many things on the show that simply and elegantly sum up the best of the good life. But a house with two swimming pools takes the cake. One for a perfect windless day and another just in case there's a little bit of a breeze. This property offered an exquisite location on the Indian Ocean. Ample space to allow for tropical architecture, Indonesian and Thai influences. It was all made easier by owner and interior decorator Grant Horik, also being the designer. Grant Bali is a favorite here on Top Billing. We've been here a few times. From the outside, the homes look similar, yet when I walk into your house, I feel as if I've been transported to Southeast Asia. That's perfectly correct. My whole intent was to create something where you had ancient pieces, preferably Southeast Asian, mixed with contemporary pieces. Outside in the courtyard, there's a beautiful old Javanese door surrounded by the entire front of a Javanese house. This pool courtyard lends eastern serenity to the home. Complementing the Frangipani tree are two Balinese carvings shipped to Grant by mistake, but he's fitted them in perfectly. The kitchen chandelier was too big for the doorway, so they broke a wall down to get it in, opening up the area. Your kitchen is a space where you can entertain and feed the masses, yet it looks pretty functional, like you can cook and make sure that you've got everything on the go. That is exactly what I wanted. You need to have the great aesthetics, but then it has to work. And this is a chef's kitchen. Not that I'm a chef, but I really enjoy cooking. So ultimately, this is the best place to have a fantastic long, lazy lunch. Speaking of entertainment, I can see that that is the spot you need to be if you want to entertain your exactly. friends. Oh, it looks phenomenal. Taking this incredible space here, joining the two, joining inside and outside together, that was crucial. So you've got your outdoor kitchen leading into your old bar here. We got this bar from a previous client who had obtained it in the Eastern Cape. It was about 150 years old and we've painted it up just to lighten and give us that Miami chic mood that I was after. However, my favorite piece is this beautiful overscaled Senefu bird. It comes from West Africa and really anchors the entire room. I've put it on a very contemporary white plinth and then the scale of the, the metal takes it up to the ceiling and that really brings this whole space together. Hanging the art and putting the Senefu bird against this massively wall-to-wall -wall mirror uh, adds a lot of coolness to the room, especially in summer, we get really, really hot summers here. And I think that it also reflects, it doubles your money in Chinese feng shui. The key was to balance different styles. You mentioned the word contemporary and I immediately feel as if it is slightly more modern. You've got your white leather couch, your geometric prints. Is that what you were trying to achieve? It's great to mix and that's what I want to do. But yeah, yeah, bring in the contemporary, bring in the splashes of gold contemporary. You know, like if you go to Miami, you get that bit of chicness. I've also brought in the geometrics on the carpets and the scatter cushions. It geometrically really brings the room together. You've continued your geometric trend with that beautiful border and once again highlighting a feature from Southeast Asia. Yes, I, I like the antithesis of the Asian piece against the African piece. And the border, in fact, is uh, from a Tahitian tattoo design, shark teeth, 
And then again juxtaposing something from Java, uh, old Buddhist carvings, surrounded by something from Polynesia. So it's great to mix different elements and different cultures. The initial staircase cut through the lounge view, so it was moved to the back of the living area. Overseeing this renovation was Grant's colleague, Paolo De Rosa. Every piece acquired for the project over eight years of travel had to find a home. This, gents, is heaven on earth. It is a wonderful suite. Will you indulge me? Absolutely. Oh. You see, it's so inviting, and I think that's the amazing thing about your home, is that it still feels like a home, not just a house. And once again, am I correct, you've brought in your theme of Southeast Asia. Yes, we did. It lends itself to Zimbali. We are, after all, in an eco estate, and Zimbali is famous for that. But we wanted to keep it contemporary, which you'll notice throughout the house. Uh, very clean lines, lots of white, with a strong bold pattern of the black and white, bringing things together. And some specific elements that you enjoy? Well, we sourced beautiful handmade lamps um, crafted in the east, uh, mother of pearl and stainless steel. Uh, we also broke through the bathroom here because it was quite a small space at the back and you wanted to see the sea view from all the angles. Grant, you've managed to use texture quite a bit. How do you ensure that it doesn't clash? The most important thing is to establish continuity. What you've just done, repeat, and then with textures such as this beautiful Koya uh, flooring, you need to have smooth textures such as the side pedestals, which are very contemporary, the smooth glass, and this mother of pearl shades. Do all the other bedrooms in the home have a similar look and feel? We do. We always believe in repeating what we do in terms of a design. It anchors the principles together. The black and white, the white finishes throughout, opening up all the bathrooms, creating space, seeing the ocean. That is our most important aspect. The estate is influenced by Sri Lankan architect Jeffrey Bauer's style of tropical modernism, which saw a rebirth of Asian culture and its export worldwide. Well, if you had to ask me, being a Josie girl, this would be my favorite part of your home. It is absolutely exquisite. Look at that view. And I think that you've really complemented your entire home with this outside area. Well, this is actually the entire reason you live here. You want to entertain outside. You want to have resort-like experience but at home. So we've created two massive gazebos, the one for dining and the one for just chilling out after a long hard day at the beach. I can imagine that you entertain out here quite often. Yeah we do, look we added all the uh, bells and whistles like the pizza oven and the oyster bar which we love spending time at, creating those wonderful tasty pizzas, shucking some oysters, entertaining. So when am I going to be invited back around for pizza and oysters? This you're is what invited, I want to know. You're invited anytime. There you go, that's what it's I like to hear. I'd like to just stand here and enjoy the view now, because that is breathtaking. After 20 years of creating dream retreats for his clients, Grant now has one of his own. Up next, Birthday Boys Lock and Bill are back from the USA with a new album. Plus, Elle Magazine South Africa toasts 20 years. Like most fans, when asked which Lockenville twin is your favorite, I reply, there's enough room in my heart for both of them. Always a live act worth seeing, the guys are back with a new studio album in June and they're celebrating their 26th birthday in style. And I heard it through the grapevine, oh, she wants to party with me, cause we had a great time, oh. Now, I used to tell you apart because Brian always used to wear the bracelet. Now what do I do? Well, for this morning in particular, I'm wearing a black jacket that's Andrew and Brian's got the lighter one. And I would say generally, um, I've normally got blonde in my hair. That seems to be the telltale these days. And according to you, I have smiley eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you do have smiley eyes though. An off-road freewheel into town on these monster mountain scooters was a fitting way to celebrate the brothers' new work. Like the track Grapevine, about having a good time with someone you just met. Don't tell me that you got me later, you. These bikes have few things that you need to master. And they're very, very important one. When you're using these bikes, you just stand here. Right here at the back. Okay, so that you have enough weight on the back tire because you'll be going, you'll be going through some bumps so that the back tire doesn't jump up. 
keep both hands always on the handlebar and make sure that you go with the speed that you feel most comfortable at. The guys have been on the move for months, recording material at studios here and abroad. You've been really busy these past two years. The, the last year we spent in the States, uh, kind of gathering everything so that when we release our new album, we can actually get it over that side, which we've been wanting to do for a long time. And other than that, it's actually just been working on the album, which I'm, I'm really, really excited about. I think it's our greatest work to date. So SABC radio stations will now be playing 90% local music. When I heard that, I just thought, Ching. I think one of the great things about it is that uh, oftentimes you'll get uh, these local artists putting out such great music that people sort of listen to it and then when they find out that they are South African they can't believe it and I think now it's a really good opportunity to let all that music be heard because um, you know we're really making music in this country that's a full international standard. Moving beyond dance style beats, Andrew and Brian's new release is one of raw, honest songwriting and as always, good times. Oh, that was great. <laughs> that was amazing. You guys were quite competitive out there, though. It was I, a, I feel like I was going pretty nicely down there. Yeah, we, yeah. It, it was a bit of a catch-up. We were sort of doing this. Do you feel that because there's two of you, you keep each other on your toes? I'd say def there's definitely an aspect of that, but I think it's a good thing. We kind of motivate each other a lot of the time. So I heard it through the grapevine that it's somebody's birthday tomorrow. Who was born first? I was born first, nine minutes. Yeah, so my, my birthday starts nine minutes after his. Well, I definitely think we should have a full start and start celebrating now. Lunch was at the elegant Boconstantia Winery, a just reward after focusing entirely on recording for the past year, rather than on live shows. How did you get the name Lock and Roll? It's a time between the, that we were born in the States and then grew up here. Uh, so it's half of a word that we relate to South Africa and then half a word that we relate to the States. You absolutely cannot keep it a secret, you have to tell me. <laughs> the lock-in has to do with, um, in fact, we've always kept it a secret, so I think we're going to continue to keep it a secret. Really? Yeah. <laughs> now your next single, Cold Shoulder, what's that about? Well, Cold Shoulder is a track that we did with Sketchy Bongo. He did some co-production on there. And uh, it's something that we've actually been chatting about for probably over a year now. And then when we came back to South Africa, we got in touch and then he sent us a beat. We loved it and wrote over it. And I, I really think we have a smash on our hands. So I just can't wait to get a release. And the music video for that, what's it going to be about? The, the sort of concept of it is to have uh, two dancers sort of interpreting the song throughout various locations in Cape Town. And then we'll kind of just be there looking cool and doing performance shots. Is it true that this latest album doesn't have a name yet? That isn't true. We do have a, we do have a name for the album. It's called uh, Taste the Weekend. Uh, the only thing is on the cover of the CD, it doesn't actually have the title. It only has it on the spine of the CD. We just thought it was such a cool picture. We didn't want to kind of interrupt it with text and everything like that. So I can hear that your birthday party is already in full swing. <laughs> So. There is definitely a party and I can see from here people are already starting, so I think we should join. <laughs> here for the party were the twins' father, Spencer Chaplin, who's a guitarist himself, as well as friends who've been there from the beginning. Met the boys in grade four, first real friends. Um, since then a lot has happened. Back in the day when they were starting off their first initial album and we were like in the back of a bucky like trying to like shelter ourselves from rain going to recording studios in different places and when it took off I mean it, it was just like the most amazing thing you know it was almost like somebody realized what they should have always known and I thought that was very special. Well I think I've known the boys for the longest time of all and uh, I've known them for 26 years tomorrow and the one thing I can say is that it's been both an amazing ride and a complete blessing. You're not only turning 26, but it's been six years since you've been in the music industry. And when you turned 20, you got your kind of rite of passage. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yes, well, that was um, our signet rings, which have the griffin on them. Um, and that's basically all the males in, in our branch of the Chaplin family get them when, uh, when the father thinks that they're the right age, which was apparently 20 for us. And, and on that same night, we got our gold sales plaque as well. So, so it was kind of like a night of golden awesomeness. Yeah, it was yeah. great. <laughs> I'll never ever forget it. I remember meeting you guys in 2010 and you've come so far and you've just remained two such incredible human beings, so down to earth, and you've still got so much more to achieve in this world. But I mean, I can see with a support group like this, that must be 
it's so leveling sometimes to know that you've got so many people backing you. Friends and family that have known you for the longest, it's them who have seen you go through the journey. They're always the first people that we play music to and always the first to give their critiques here and there. So I think it's, it's incredibly important to have that base there from the word go and to know that you've actually got a support system there helps instrumentally in the whole process. It's good to, you know, come back and chill with the fam up the west coast or at the homestead and just cook a good meal, have a few drinks and everyone kind of treats you like nothing ever happened. After their sonic kaleidoscope of an album lands next month and they start touring Taste the Weekend, quiet moments will be few and far between. Looking just as good as the Lockenville guys in their 20s is Elle magazine South Africa, which toasted its 20th year at a rocking birthday party. And with Dalez on the decks, oh, what a night it was. The celebration reflected how in over 200 issues in their 20 years, Elle South Africa's become a benchmark for fashion journalism. You know, when one of the country's most iconic magazines celebrates their 20th birthday, things are going to get really large. As you can see behind me, the party's already got started. I'm going to go party, baby. Held in Rosebank's design district, the evening was a chance for editor Emily Gambard to take in two whirlwind decades. 20 years is a massive milestone in any industry. What is the secret to success with Elf? I think um, the secret is that first it's an amazing team because without my team this magazine wouldn't exist. Um, and it's, it's also about, you know, Elle is an incredible brand. It's about sexy, spirited, fun, light sisterhood. It's about being the voices of the women in South Africa. And I think hopefully we've been doing that for 20 years and we're going to do it for the next million years ahead. From a publisher's perspective, what do you think has made the magazine so successful? She's a very versatile brand. Because she's very young, she's able to adapt. And uh, the formulation of ours has always been very accessible. She's just very able to adapt to any change that gets thrown at her. It's her personality. Now, you photographed a lot of people, obviously, um, including myself. Now, without being too biased, who has been the best person you've ever photographed? Oh, wow. Definitely someone on the side, I don't know, maybe, I'll check after I've done some Photoshop, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean Photoshop? Totally kidding. <laughs> Jeez. My late sister was obsessed with Elle magazine, so I used to steal her copies every single month and take them to school and just gush with my friends. It's a celebration, man. 20 years of hard work, 20 years of amazing quality does not come easy. I think they kind of managed to stay relevant, you know, for 20 years because it kind of has that international flair and they managed to keep it well done. Happy birthday! Elle magazine is like the fashion god of books. I mean, we all turn to it to know what's happening, what's in, what's not. It's like a fashion bible in its own sense. That was worth the party until dawn. Not ones to dine out on their success. The editorial team then showed us their latest initiative here in Newtown. Elle's first pop-up office to reconnect with their readers. Nicole, it seems so crazy out here. What is actually going on? Basically what we wanted to do was show how social media has actually brought people together. So we wanted to bring the L team to a space where we can interact with our readers through social media and bring the content of our magazine alive. So I think people are frantically running around because we're in the process of the amazing race, which is where we, we took the first 12 readers who entered and divided them into groups of three. Um, and we devised clues to lead them to different shops around the workshop Newtown space. Congratulations guys, how are you feeling? I'm a little unfit and tired. <laughs> how was the whole experience though? You guys were so quick on your feet. Yeah, we, we were really trying to run. We, we made it through running from Makosa to Glitter. I learned a lot about South African designers and things right now. That's this is like a crash course in yeah. everything. We took part in an Insta walk featuring Elle's style reporter finalists. Eight outstanding bloggers out of 300 applicants, each wanting to show that theirs is the most interesting take on what's going down on the streets and catwalks of the nation. I love the idea of the L style reporter. Okay, so our Star Reporter competition is really exciting. It's all about finding emerging talent and bringing their storytelling across. So the competition was all about them capturing their stories and how they see the country and our cultures. 
So we're announcing the winner tonight. The winner will then contribute to Elle magazine for the next six months. They get a page in the issue where they can tell their stories um, and really educate our readers as well about what they find out there. Winner Tembo Mbuyisa's work proved edgy, architectural, and showed a strong point of view and visual narrative. Tembo, congratulations. Tell me about your submission. I did a, a blog called Memory K. It's basically like um, a photo album for, for South African and youth style, you know. It's a huge feat. Um, Elle magazine is like one of the biggest selling magazines in, in the world, you know. And to, to be part of that team makes, um, is healthy for me, it's healthy for my career. Temba offers a fresh perspective and an independent opinion. Elle is all about breaking the boundaries. What can we look forward to next? Ella has always been about exploring new things and doing things a bit differently. You're going to see more events like these ones. You're going to see more crazy things, digital exploration. You're going to see a lot of things happening. Catch Temba's first page in Elle Magazine's August issue. Want the hippest and hottest in celebrity, culture, fashion and beauty? The answer is Elle Elementary. Next, DJ Zinthe learns her trade, grabs her chance and ensures that other women DJs will follow where she has led. House DJing has long been a male preserve, or it was, until Zintle Gianni broke down the doors for female DJs in this country. Established as a popular artist in Africa, and as far as the UK and US, she's also gone on to a successful career as an actress and TV presenter. Between workouts, Zintle is a club and radio DJ, presents live music shows on TV, stars in soapies and movies, She's released an album, opened an academy, and had a baby. Hey. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. You are exceptionally talented. A businesswoman, presenter, DJ, and most importantly, mom. How do you manage it all? Well, it's one day at a time. Um, I think for me, it's about planning. I'm a big planner, and I have an amazing team around me that helps me just do just that. I know that you're a fitness junkie and a fitness expert, but I'm sure that your little one Cairo adds to the exercise and keeping you in shape. Yeah, exactly, especially for my arms. Hey? Yeah. So I have to lift her all the time. Now she started crawling, so now we're running around the house trying to make sure she's not hurting herself. And we like the outdoors, me and her. So I exercise in the gym, but also at home, if I'm at home and I want to spend time with her, I still use her like as a little dumbbell and she helps me with my exercises. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So you had baby Cairo in July. When was it that you decided, okay, you know what? I'm gonna get back into shape. You know what, I wanna be honest. For the first month, I actually took my time and ate my heart out. Didn't go to gym, I was just eating and spending time with baby Cairo. But after a while, you know, you start feeling weird because your clothes don't fit and your ass is not so tight and you know, your stomach is just, you know, not going back to the normal size. So it makes you feel a bit conscious. So I had to go back to gym. You're gonna have to show me some exercises to get back in shape. Yeah, let's go, let me show you. All right, all right. So, so all on your hands. Okay. And your knees bent. Yes. Stomach muscles tight. Right. And what you're doing is you're just kicking to the side, oh. lifting the one hand. Lovely. Wow, I can really feel that. Yeah. <laughs> My turn next. So you're gonna go into the plank. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then drop your right elbow, left elbow, right elbow up, Ooh. left elbow up. Okay. Feel that. That's hectic. And then opposite side, left, right, left, right. And then we just do a couple of those. And then we'll end up with some burpees. That is crazy. Right, left, right, left. You're not too bad, eh? You got it going on. How did you find that? That was easy, but... Easy? Yeah. Was that it? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> she, she's, she's put the challenge on. How's your burpee game? Listen, it's on point. Let's do it. Come. I should not have put myself in this situation. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Are you gonna join me or what? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Up, 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 up. Okay, go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she's making me do it on my own. You did two on your own, that's good. Zintler's apartment is a photo biography of the girl from KZN who learned mixing from her brother. At a gig one night, the DJ didn't pitch. She stepped in and her career was born. Ten years later, so was her daughter Cairo. 
Welcome to my home. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, wow. This must be little Cairo. Cairo. Yeah, that's Cairo. It's the princess framing the queen. That yeah. must be you. <laughs> yeah. It, it is me. Yeah, it, it, it is me. Well, that's, well, me, yeah. that's how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. With a banging body like yours, I know that is not just exercise that keeps you in shape. Also a very healthy diet, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is something really simple. Um, it's a quinoa salad and it's got my favorite ingredients. Um, the smoked trout, uh, avocado I love. Gotta love some avo. And you know, the red onions bring in the flavor. Yes. So this is something that you can just whoop up, you know, in like a few minutes and you have something healthy and filling. When did you realize that South Africa had fallen in love with you? <laughs> it, it, it was very gradual, you know, my growth was very gradual, it took time and I mean my my support was being at the club because I'm a club DJ but it wasn't anything, you know, like people picking you up, it was just always at the club but eventually once I started doing shows like Jiyama Jiga, people started recognizing me on the streets but it was always gradual, it took time, it was paced, it was well paced. As a radio mix DJ, Zintler's skills were noticed by music producer Oskido, who released her compilation Feminine Touch. Now I've been noticing your ink and I've been wanting to talk about it for a while. You've got to tell us about these tats. Okay, so uh, the rose is the latest one that I just got. Um, this actually... That's very cool. I got last year after I had a baby. Roses are my thing. Even when you look around the house, you'll find a few roses. I have like a, a low garden outside and... Um, so I just got this one just, you know, to remind myself of, you know, my strength and all kinds of things. But uh, this is my brother's name actually, Zakele, uh, the one who told me how to DJ. So this was here before the big one. So eventually I had to just crowd his name and get something even cooler than his name. Okay, you didn't point it out, you didn't talk about it, but I noticed a little tattoo on your finger there. What's that about? This is actually cool, huh? Hey? Yeah. Uh, so this I got uh, on, on 5FM. Fix and Forbes had um, a little challenge and if if you picked out a box that said tattoo, then you had to get one in the spot. And for some funny reason, I swapped boxes with people until I got the wrong one. And then I had to get it on the spot. So I think it's quite cool, actually. Okay, that must mean that you, you, you're a lady of your word, first of all. And then, yeah. and then you are quite impulsive. Do you think that would uh, sort of contribute to where you are now in terms of, of your success? Um, you know what, I've been very, well, um, safe for a long time. So even with my career, I've been planning and executing, and but I've just gone into a space in my life recently where I just wanna try anything. Like, oh. So this was one of those things that I just wanted to see if I can just do. It's seven years since Miss Gianne opened SA's first DJ Academy for women. And we took a moment to put her varied career into perspective. How have your priorities shifted since you've had baby Cara? They've shifted a lot. Um, I've been forced to be happier. <laughs> I'm happier mm -hmm. now. I'm more present uh, in my life. And I've just started trying new things. I mean, I've always had the phobia for balloons, but obviously my child can't have a party without balloons. So I have to face my fears because I can't teach her about fear. So it's that kind of thing where you have to be stronger. You have to be the leader. So I'm, I'm more responsible now. So what about love? I mean, do you have time for romance since your schedule's so erratic and hectic? I mean, I, I love love, you know, I always have time for love, but right now I just wanted to just work on self-love, you know. I think I can only teach Cairo about love if I know how to love myself. So in terms of meeting someone, I'm sure I'll meet someone someday, but for now I'm just focusing on loving myself and loving the baby. You do realize that you've paved the way for female DJs in the country. Oh, that makes me happy. I'm quite passionate about females growing, um, especially in the entertainment business. There are so many guys making it, there are so many DJs, so it's about time that girls start making it and my contribution is something that I want to do because I want the industry to grow. Well, it's really been fantastic spending the day with you. I can understand why the country loves you. Wishing you all the best for your future. Thank you. A hundred students have graduated from Sinclair's Newtown Academy and they all look to her life as one they hope to emulate. I do miss radio, but then again, this show beats any studio I was ever in. Coming up, a gorgeous wedding dress worn by three generations in one family. And former Mr. SA Andrew Govender premieres his new film. story is a fairy tale in three parts. When radio presenter Diana Dizey Fensham married Jake Redman, the top-ranked golfer on the SA Pro Circuit, the bride's dress not only belonged to her mother, but to her grandmother too. Now this dress, we've got to see. 
This is a match made in golf. Daisy and Jake met when he was a top amateur golfer and she played for her Southern Cape provincial team. Ten years later, they were about to marry. How did you pop the question? I actually took her down to a, to a private beach in uh, Nisner. It's called Nutsi Castle. I took her down explaining to her that we're going to celebrate our 8th anniversary and uh, I went down on, onto one knee and as I actually took the box out of my pocket, I opened the box and the ring fell out into the sand. No. So <laughs> I had to quickly get the, pick the ring up, blow the sand out, luckily she said yes. And guys, what was your reaction to the engagement? I was incredibly excited. I met Jake on the golf course um, when I was about 22 years old and he was 18 at the time. And after the round of golf, I went back to my sister and I said to her, I've met the most amazing guy for you to meet. Four years later, we ended up playing in a golf tournament together and she met Jake. That was the start of the relationship. We met Daisy at her family home in PE to view the dress worn by her grandmother, Diana Dakin. Made of Duchess satin by nuns at Cathcart Convent, it was then worn by Daisy's mom, Jenny Fencham, on her big day. Now it was her daughter's turn. You look absolutely exquisite. Is this the wedding you've always dreamed of? It really is. I've grown up in this beautiful home. The setting is perfect. And since a little girl, I used to make my mom take this dress that I'm wearing um, out of the cupboard. I think since I was four or five, I tried it on. And today, my dreams come true and I'm getting married in my mom's dress, which was my grand's. How does it feel to hand over your wedding dress to your daughter? Very, very special because my mum gave me the dress and three months after my wedding she passed away. So it was something that Daisy always knew and understood and we spoke about and it has been a very special moment for us. You're a golfer, Jake's a golfer. Is that what brought the two of you together? I spotted this handsome hunk on the golf course while he was playing against my brother. I think it was the eyes that got me. Uh, the first conversation I had with him, he just I felt like he was looking straight through me and definitely golf, it's a common interest between the two of us. It's really lovely, we go away, we're very active and we don't spend time in shopping malls, we're rather on the fairways. That's how we spend our time together. The couple were to be married in St. Cuthbert's Church where Daisy's parents were wed. As well as pro golfers from the Sunshine Tour, the guest list included cricketing greats. Father of the bride, Russell Fencham, is an ex-Springbok hockey player, so sport runs deep on both sides of the family. Also on hand was Daisy's extended radio family. Sasha, how did you and Daisy meet? Well, I tell you, I was looking for a sports presenter and I know that she was a great sports fanatic and she loved golf especially. So I sat and asked her to read a, a sports report and she said Norwich City instead of Norwich. And I thought, there's a winner. There we go, I've got her. You know, if I can say that in front of her, I know she's going to be amazing. And she's just blossomed, besides being into a wonderful woman, into an incredible broadcaster as well. So I, I couldn't be happier for her. What advice do you have for the newlyweds? advice and I'm not even there but Daisy, Jake, uh, remain who you are as individuals but make sure that you grow together in your life's journey. Just uh, be honest and be true to themselves. I mean they've known each other for so long. We, in our family we actually feel that they're an old married couple and uh, this is a great, a great match. The couple's choice of the family home for their reception worked perfectly. How did you add magic to the garden? There was a lot of magic here. Three generations have lived in this house with this beautiful garden. Jenny wanted us to bring the lovely vintage element of the antique bicycle and it's just been a magical place for them to grow up in and to have your wedding at your family home is quite remarkable. Held under a tent over the tennis court, the function had an elegant cream, white and champagne theme rich in 3,000 flowers. How did you make her dream wedding come true? So most important for the family was that they wanted to bring that vintage look through without going over the top. So they were involved in the crystal elements and bringing plenty of flowers and silver bowls into the whole equation. Um, the ivy was specifically picked out by the family to add to the tent environment. That evening, the bride disappeared for a while and just as guests began asking after her, the secret is out. The second dress has been revealed. Daisy, you look amazing. Dennis, tell us about the dress. We did the 
sort of a party dress, flowy, relaxed feel to complement the evening's fun that's lying ahead now. So we try to get a very simple cut dress but use a, a, a bit of a vintage feel. So we use different laces from Brussels and Madeira. We've got the low back similar to the, the dress that we had for, uh, that we re remodeled for, for a granny's dress. And why did you choose a second dress? I just thought for the party side of things, the other dress is very heavy, it's not ideal to hit the dance floor. <laughs> so I just think this is perfect to enjoy the rest of the night. And I do really feel like a princess in it. The new Mr. and Mrs. Redman looked as if Jake had just won the US Masters or the British Open. Daisy already travels to as many of his tournaments as she can, but they're hoping to travel together more often. As a fine golfer herself, Jake's wife would make a first-class professional caddy, and they'd be quite a team. But after a decade together, no one's rushing any decisions. Any honeymoon plans? Funny enough, I was playing a golf tournament and they had a hole-in-one prize on normally the toughest par three. I happened to, to hit it in the hole from 221 meters with a four iron. That won us a trip to, to Italy. I'm so excited. I've never been to Italy. It is a dream of mine to go to Italy, especially Tuscany. So I'm really looking forward to it. This relationship has been the best round of their lives. Long may it continue. And now to our next great romance and two kinds of forbidden love. First, the plot of the award-winning film Free State about an interracial couple during apartheid. And then the story of the leading man, Andrew Govender, a qualified actuarial analyst who dared to pursue a career in the movies. Free State has been screened at festivals from India to the US. And Andrew was back for the South African premiere. I met with the director and the producer about a year and a half ago in a little coffee shop in Johannesburg and they pitched this idea to me and so to kind of see it on the big screen finally it's just it's really exciting. You know I just love the entire filmmaking process from being able to work with the script and get into character and then from that you're being on set and just learning as much as I can and, and then finally just seeing yourself up on the big screen it's really exciting. There's been a lot of movies about apartheid and about this subject but this movie is a love story during that time and what it was like for the real people living in that period to struggle for something like just falling in love. Mr. South Africa turned Hollywood. You're also a bit of a business mind as well. What I want to know is, has acting always been a passion? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, ever since I was a teenager, I used to be on set. You know, I used to do modeling stuff. I used to try to get into acting. Um, but of course, I'm going to have to go to university and get an actual education. But I'm, I'm really happy that I have my career. I'm able to do um, acting now on the side. OK, so I know that you've moved to LA. It can be a bit of a jungle out there. What's it been like? Uh, LA is just a whole nother beast. The film industry over there is just crazy. It's cutthroat. Um, I get to do my actuarial stuff. I get to be on set. I mean, for me, I'm just living the dream over there. I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity. Now you're back in South Africa from LA for your very first premiere, Free State, the movie. I play the character of Ravi, who's very much a family man. He works in the family spice shop. And then he's arranged to get married to an Indian girl, whom he realizes he doesn't really have a lot in common with. And that's when he meets Nicola Bredenbach's character and they just fall crazy in love with each other and they're doing a lot of things they're not supposed to and then they have the police after them. I heard that you were mesmerized by a beauty in one of the scenes and you actually forgot some of your lines and they had to kind of like cue you. Ravi, come on man, this is your line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, have you seen Nicola? She's beautiful. She's a beautiful girl. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can understand how I forgot those lines. It was this incredible scene where we had to sit by the lake and we were trying to connect with each other and it was beautiful and uh, I just kind of forgot that I was even doing a scene. I guess that's when you know you're in character when you really fall falling in love on set. The stars at the Askari Lodge in the Mahalisberg are the elephants and they're trained using positive conditioning. These are some seriously big friends you have there. I'm not going to pick a fight with you at all. This one here is Damara and Damara is around uh, 20 now and Nzeve is actually around 22. I saw you doing something where you held the carrot in your mouth. Yeah. Is so that a bit dangerous well. for me to do? How yeah, would well, you want well, to do that? It would be cool for everyone to do that as long as it's food. All right, listen, like that'll it. be my kiss. <laughs> that'll be my kiss. You're going first, so okay. you know. If I'll do that. You, I'll do that. Yeah. And then you'll do the sloppy kiss, the very sloppy one. Okay. Yeah. You grab three pieces. All right. Yeah. So the first one, hand it over to him. All right. You go first. There, take it. Good boy. It's Home. your time to go for it. Okay. Now we're gonna get a kiss. All right, all right, okay. Let's do this. <laughs> oh. Okay, carry away. What you got? Smell, boy. Kiss. 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 Ki
Wow. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. That's but your it, turn now. You gotta go. go for it. Let me go for it. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> this one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got it going on, man. You awesome. got to care for that Listen, one. Listen, well, you know what? I've kissed a few elephants in my day, Whew. so <laughs> but this wasn't too bad. Now we're going to see whether or not you're an action star. Let's go for it. Damara, kick. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Well, so I'm a bit of a striker. What do you, what do you I'm, fancy I'm, I'm yourself? I'm more of a goalkeeper. So All right. Roll it gently. Here. Roll it gently. Throw, boy. Go. What? You ready? Whoa. Oh! Oh, that wasn't bad. You caught me off guard there. You want to try it one more time? Here we go. Tomorrow, trunk down. Here we go. One more time. Give me a, give me a second, man. What's wrong with you? Give me a second. Keep her. Keep her. Here we go. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. Nice one. Teamwork makes the dream work. Boom. After six matric distinctions and his honors degree, Andrew could walk into a top job in financial services. Instead, he followed his dreams. <laughs> that was pretty cool, man, you've got to admit. <laughs> that was really I cool. mean, I, I had a lot of fun playing with the elephants, and i got to say, Nteve, I love you, girl. What was your most memorable moment while filming Free State? Getting to work with A-list South African talent was for me just a huge plus. The likes of Leti Kamalo, Dion Lutz, they were able to just mentor me on set and really help me throughout the entire process of making this movie. What is it that you'd still like to achieve? Uh, well, I'm based right now in Los Angeles, and I want to focus on drama. I kind of want to you know, do that as much as I can, but at the same time, focus on my actual career. I feel like having both worlds kind of keeps me sane. You know, I can juggle going back and forth between the two. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, I just kind of want to be happy with whatever I'm doing, and, and, and acting for me is that. From here, it's more film festivals in North America, and perhaps news of Andrew's next big role. Still to come, Jessica Bonin's Long Street Tiva makes such a splash she's exporting to China. Another young South African succeeding against the grain is Jessica Bonin. When others are opening coffee bars and giant American brands are entering the market, Jessica decided that tea and not coffee is where it's at. After five and a half years researching and making 60,000 cups of tea, Jessica Bonin should be exhausted. In fact, she's quite the opposite and the ultimate advert for her own product. Hi. Oh, I love dogs. I've got three at home. What's her name? Gypsy. Oh, sweet, man. You know, I actually thought we were going for tea. Yeah, well, I thought that uh, we could get a little bit of exercise in, get the heart rate up. This is basically a surf skate, so it simulates surfing on land. So I think you're going to pick it up really easily. <laughs> Sweet, well let's give it a try. Okay, cool. Here yeah. you go. You can try my one. All right. Basically it's toe heel, toe heel, and that sort of picks up momentum and gets you uh, some speed. And then it's the same kind of simulation as when you're surfing. So you're sort of getting momentum by moving your hips and your shoulders and your hand guides your direction. And then the toe heel basically gives you the momentum. Our workout was a chance to hear how caffeine in tea works as a muscular stimulant, delivering sustainable energy that's conducive to productivity. Jess, you've sold me on surf skating. I have to get myself one of these boards. You did so well. I'm really impressed. Well, clearly you live a healthy lifestyle. How does tea tie in with it all? Well, tea is an amazing plant. It has over 2,000 different chemicals in it, all of which have a different kind of purpose. So you want to be calm, it'll calm you. You want to be energized, it'll energize you. It's got an amino acid in it called L-theanine, which is an adaptogen. So it activates the part of your brain that stimulates you, simultaneously the part of your brain that calms you. So it really gives a good foundation for a whole rounded physiological effect. Jessica wants to do for this beverage what takeaway cafes did for coffee. And from her tea bar here in Long Street, she sees infinite potential and an uncapped market. Welcome to my tea bar, Lady Bonin's Tea. <laughs> Jess, this is so lovely. Didn't you start in a caravan? I did, yeah, six years ago. Uh, it was actually South Africa's first food truck and the world's first tea caravan. And now we have South Africa's first uh, dedicated tea bar, selling takeaway tea and wear and sit down tea as well. Think black sesame seed roasted green teas, matcha lattes, iced tea slushies, tea frappes and more. 
Essentially what we're doing is a tea evolution. We're trying to reinvent the experience that people have with tea and the association that they've got. So coffee went through this about 15 years ago and we want to do the same process. So we facilitate that experience here in the shop by not only serving it in a traditional modern way where you can get lattes and chinos or with various teas, but also through the traditional experience. And we have all the equipment and the various teas. Of course, I do a lot of tea blends as well. So um, here you can smell one. Oh, thank you. Her blends and teas are grown sustainably and on farms that are community driven. So we're going to use my harmonizer tea, which is a buhu base. Yeah. Uh, and this is a beautiful little glass teapot. It has an infuser uh, inside. This is essentially in place of a tea bag so that you can catch the leaves and not have to worry about filtering them. So basically, you know, you can steep it from anywhere from two minutes to five minutes. Now we'll just wait for it to be ready. Keen to dispel perceptions like green tea being bitter, Jess insists it's all in how you make it. It's got a lovely strong smell. People always expect that uh, the colour of the water dictates the strength of the flavour. But with the buchu it stays quite light and yet it's a very powerful flavour tea. Mm, sounds interesting. Cheers! It was Jess's grandmother who taught her how to save a tea. It's got a bit of a bushy Feinbos mint flavour to it, but it's very calming at the same time. Shall we have some of that pumpkin chai? <laughs> the evolution of this business coincided with that of Standard Bank's payment solution SnapScan, and Jessica was amongst the first to trial the new technology. How did the two of you link up? So Lady Bondon's Tea is exactly the kind of, of merchant that we like working with and the original store actually used to be just a few blocks from our office. So we've been together for, for quite a few years. Well, I'm going to go get you some of our very special pumpkin spice chai. Awesome. Well, I use SnapScan almost every day. I use it for parking, paying at markets. So how would you explain it to someone who doesn't know about it? So in essence, SnapScan is really just an easy way for consumers to pay using nothing but their phone. So you link your credit or bank card to your cell phone and then you can pay a wide variety of merchants. How secure is it linking your bank account to this app? For SnapScan, safety and security is our number one concern. And that's also one of the reasons we partner with Standard Bank to make sure that you get that same safe bank experience. Oh, thank you so much. Why is it effective for startup ventures or new businesses or entrepreneurs like Jess to employ something like this? In South Africa, there are almost 400,000 small merchants who want to transact and who want to interact with customers. And today, it's very hard to do a lot of those transactions with cash. And that's where SnapScan allows them to accept card payments and electronic payments in a, in a very effective way. When I first started my business, SnapScan was an amazing solution because I couldn't afford to get a card machine. The monthly expenses were just a bit much uh, and people obviously didn't always have cash on them. So SnapScan, they could sign up in 30 seconds and it brought more business to my company because obviously now there was that option. And how does a vendor set up with SnapScan? It's incredibly simple. The easiest way to get signed up is to go to the website, uh, enter your details there and one of our agents will come out to you to make sure you set up and understand exactly how the product works. Lady Bonin is now also exporting from Africa to Malaysia, China and Holland. For all the tea lovers out there, that one was for you. In fact, I could do with a cup myself. So thank you for joining us, everyone. And until next Thursday, have yourself a magical weekend. Good night and God bless. Join us again next week as soap legend Sophie Ndaba shares her remarkable story of weight loss. Actor and presenter Heino Schmidt shows his artistic talent. And DJs Bailey Schneider and DJ Socks get married twice. Yeah,